Jamal, what, what are you thinking about right now? I just want to win. I really want to start at, at the beginning and baby Jamal. Is it true that you would play basketball for hours starting at three years old? Oh yeah, basketball was like the only thing I wanted to do growing up. As a little kid, I would just roll the ball around, you know, kick it around, um, I would always have it in my hands. Uh, I didn't have cable or TV growing up, so I would like just as a little kid, I would watch the cars go by and I'd, be, I'd know every single car um, and all their models and everything. And then basketball was my other hobby. Basketball was kind of like in my DNA. I would play for six, seven hours a day, easy. You know, you, your childhood, your dad kind of took away some of the distractions. And the workouts you and your father, Roger, did growing up, a thing of legend. The stories of you doing Kung Fu exercises, including meditation. Can you explain some of the things you all focused on in your training and how it's helped you today? We did like a lot of wrestling, a lot of grappling, uh, boxing. We would like stretch, do uh, different kicks. But I would go to the, my dad's sensei, we would you know, child train with him. And it was just a different mindset. Like it was not like Kung Fu was not like a, any other sport, you know, like it's, it's not, it's very uh, self-oriented in terms of self-improvement, you know, like you don't level up just by you know making a jump shot. You level up by like doing the perfect form for a year straight, you know what I'm saying? So. Like, that's where it was different for me, where just I, I had to be, I had to have myself the higher standard all the time. And that discipline just carried over in basketball. I mean, this should be like a movie with some, you know, Rocky music behind all this training. Sometimes like there'll be certain things that like, uh, like in the fall, uh, we have a tree in the front yard and the, the leaves would fall down. And it'd be like, you know, it'd be cold, cold as hell. And like for my training, it would be picking up the leaves around the yard with my bare hands. So I could just, you get accustomed to the pain, you know, I get used to the threshold and it's just kind of build it over time. So I have a high pain threshold. Um, I've always had that. And we just do stuff like that. It was just, you just take things as a challenge. It wasn't like a work thing, you know what I'm saying? It was just, my dad wasn't trying to punish me or anything, but it would be like, you know, something you try to get through and, and it would be my training for the day. You know? It was more mental than it was physical. Yeah. And you in order to like close your training out for the day, you had to hit 30 straight free throws before you could end the Yeah, week. we mix it up. Sometimes we do 30 straight free throws or sometimes it'd be like a, like a corner shot, two corner shots, a wing, top, and a half court shot all in a row from this and I wouldn't leave. And so like, that would be, that would be the, that would be my training. You don't make it for like an hour. And then it's just like, all right, well, how long am I actually gonna be out here trying to make the shots? So like you just kind of lock yourself in to get it done. And then you realize, man, I could have done that the first time. So you just get better at it, better at it. And you get better at flipping on that switch and just locking in. So like I said, I'm more of a mental person. I'm not, uh, I have pain, like a few pain threshold, but like I'm, I'm able to lock in uh, mentally. I hate to make the corny uh, example of like Mr. Miyagi, but it, it sounds like he really, you know, is able to create uh, an environment that, um, allows athletes to perform at their best level. And, and and we saw you perform at just an extraordinary level in Orlando. Coach Malone, you know, even said that you you almost left a piece of yourself there. But as as it was a quick turnaround into the regular season, and, and, yeah, I know, I see that face. Almost that's the same face you gave after you after you realized it was gonna you were back at it after, you know, the the grueling series that you had. Um and you've been dealing with some nagging injuries with this compact schedule. What's been the most difficult challenge for you personally this season with the, with the transition to this this year? It's funny. I'm talking about you know how how well I was brought up mentally and all the training I had, and it's just man, it's just been a it's just been a mental season for me. It's been a mental season for me. After playing that way and then getting a break, it's just like a kind of breath of fresh air. But it was such a short breath. Um, to lock back in and start the grind out. People forget like how long the season is. It's like game day, off day, game day, off day. I forget the days of the week. I just know game day and I know off day. You know, I was kind of joking about like a, uh, it being like an AAU tournament for me my whole life just because uh, it's so back to back and you gotta you gotta play your, you try to play at your peak every single day. Um, but you know what I'm saying? I just try to stay locked in and I try to have fun with it. I think that's my biggest, uh, my biggest key. But you now these guys in, in the locker room, those are my brothers over there. Monte, Sap, a Joker thrill all these guys i you know what i'm saying we 
we've been here the whole time. We try, we try to finish what we started. So I think just trying to make it more fun uh, within ourselves and just keep everybody happy has been uh, uh, the biggest thing for us, the biggest thing for me, and just keeping things light. You know, it's it's, it's our job to go out here and be professional and, and hoop every day, but uh, we'll make it fun within ourselves. Um, it just kind of changes the mood and, and helps us, you know, go out there and do our jobs with a high level. Everybody's going through it. There's just this a different mental strain, not just, you know, the country, the world, but I'm talking to so many different players just about, you know, no practices. You can't even get into your, your practice facilities to get that extra work in and all that kind of adds up. And then for you coming off of this performance you had in the bubble, which was just historic, I mean, did, do you feel like you've had the weight of having to live up to bubble Jamal a little bit to start the season? Uh, it was a lot. Uh, that's a lot at first, just because you know everybody wants to. Every time I touch the ball, everybody wants me to put up fifty. You know, but I was saying we got. I have an MVP on my team. Like you know, he's going crazy. So it's a lot of fun to watch him work, and, and uh, I'm there when I when I need to be. But it's been it's been a lot. I think to start the season, I was struggling because I was trying to play through some negative injuries, and um, it's hard to get judged by haters and, and, and people all the time. But you know, somebody they don't even know basketball, uh, they don't even know what's going on. You just gotta you know trying to find out of it all the time. Um, but like I said, we're trying to go for a championship. It's a long season. And you know what I'm saying? We had a little rough stretch and people thought, oh man, the Nuggets are on this or that. Just, you gotta, don't worry about it. You just go over there and do your job and go over there and play. And um, like I said, just trying in the right direction right now. I know that the playoffs, I'll be ready. And a big element to, to this situation of being secluded and you being you know, a proud Canadian, your family back home and unlike most NBA players here in the U.S. there's just strict health protocols it made it you know basically impossible to see your family in Ontario so how have you managed your emotions through it all and we just talked about how close you are with your dad and how he still remains one of your coaches so how has that impacted you this season? He hasn't been able to make it out on uh, my family has been able to make it out um, I haven't seen my brother and my mom since the offseason um, but I'm doing what I love. I'm playing basketball at the, at the highest level I can play. So um, I talk to my dad every single day. I talk to my brother. My little brother's 13, telling me, you know, go to the rim when you're not shooting well. You know, so it's like we just keep that. We just keep in touch. We talk about it. And like I said, I just try to make it fun. I make it as fun as I can. Go through a hoop and um, keep a smile on my face. Keep the energy light in here. Um, it kind of changes things a lot. I think the mood you put people in and the mood you set for yourself uh, really sets the tone. 13 year old brother. So obviously, he's got to be an NBA fan. So, who's his favorite player aside from? Duh. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then when he calls you after a match, or like, who does he get the most excited about for you to play? I think Kyrie. Okay. I think Kyrie. Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie, I mean, Kyrie's just, he's just so fun to watch. You know, he just, he plays so loose and so free, ball handling. And, Get into the rim and all his finishes, and I think you know my brother see me do that kind of stuff as well. So I think it's just a match that he loves to watch. I'm a fan too. Too. <laughs> the best behind the scenes videos that um, we saw from the bubble was when you know you and Donovan Mitchell saw each other on, on the campus after you dropped 55 um, on you guys. I was in the bubble. It, it was a strange environment. Um, just you know, like it was like a summer camp. What what was it? What was the dynamic like for you? um in that environment because we know it wasn't easy for a lot of guys but clearly you thrived on the court how was it for you off the court well, i just felt like it was no distractions for me you know i didn't have to do anything i just i would hoop and go back to my room and eat and prepare for the next game so i felt like that was the most mocking i've been where literally for everybody in there it was just basketball it was you know there's no there's no distractions there's no going out to eat there's no partying so i think i strived in that challenge of not having anything and just being locked in i think that's like i said it's in my dna to, to hoop for hours and hours get tired and have fun so i was just looking forward to playing every game and you know when you're playing well it's just, it makes it that much easier so when basketball is everything for me uh when i give everything to the game the game uh, gets everything back but look you're not just a basketball player you also have one of the most powerful moments in the bubble um after your 50 point performance in game six against the Jazz, where you reference the shoes that you wore a, a bunch in the bubble with the faces of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Now, you've been such an out front advocate for social justice. So how, how do you feel now about the impact the NBA had this summer and how it's carried over this season, um, You know, especially with the social justice committee? I think it's amazing what we've been doing. Um, the NBA's done a great job, it's helping out. It's, you know, trying to keep, keep it on the topic, even with the 
uh, the Asian hate that just went on and everything. Like it's not just like it's not just blacks. It's 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 everybody and it happens everywhere. And that's that's the sad part. So I think just trying to keep that keep the topic on because people try to you know dismiss it. Um, I think that's what people try to dismiss it and put it away. Um, and it's very blatant. So uh, yeah, we're gonna keep doing our part. NBA's trying to do their part. And uh, you know, I think the players have done a great, a great job. But there's a lot of guys doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes to um, to make some change. For those who may be casuals, if you will, and uh, only see Jokic's name in the MVP race with Joel and LeBron, um, but don't understand or taking the time to see just what he's possible of. Uh, what can you say about Jokic um, and how he's been playing this season and, and what it's like being his teammate? It's amazing. I come off and pick and roll. I get it, whether they switch or not. My feed big fella. It's like, yeah, I'm open, but he's finding guys. He's looking people off. He's scoring whenever he wants. He's playing defense, getting deflections, throwing full court passes. He's 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 been amazing. There's nothing else to say. He can literally give him the ball and he'll, he'll make anything happen. Uh, he makes everybody better. Uh, he's so unselfish. Um, he's looking to pass. He's looking to make a play for others. And he's the system of our offense. It's just amazing how easy he makes it look and how easy he makes the game. Uh, I look for not just him, but for everybody. It's a lot of fun to play. As we round the corner here um, in this playoff push, uh, you, you said you, you didn't touch a basketball over the All-Star break. Um, this this season is certainly a test of endurance. So what would you say are your personal goals for, for this second half of the season, which is really, you know, a, a, a sprint to the end? I'm just a winner, man. I'm just a winner. I know how to win. I think it's a championship is the only goal for me right now. I don't really have anything that I'm trying to you know, personally be or try to do or try to impress anybody. I think just winning is winning solves everything. And uh, we got a great squad. We got we got a chance to win it all. And I'm just trying to make that the goal for not just me, but for everybody here. And you know, when we're locked in, like you saw yesterday, and guys are making great shots, playing for each other, and, and we're having fun. You know, I feel like that's part of my job too. I, I, I'm kind of the engine, the emotional engine for the squad. Um, you know, so how I how I am. And, uh, whatever, if I'm down, the team kind of plays a little down, and when I'm up, it feels like nobody can stop us. So I just try to keep a level ahead, stay consistent as I can. And, uh, you know, winning solves everything. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN.